How you doing? I'm doing okay. It's just been a lot to deal with these past few weeks. You know, people always look at dealing with the emotions surrounding the death of a loved one, but no one ever talks about all the other stuff that goes with it. So that's the donation box, hmm? Yep, that's it. Still haven't opened it. Why not? Oh, well, because part of me hates that box and what it represents. And the money's a reminder. And the other part? The other part wants to know how much is in there. Hey. 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 You doing okay? Oh, under the circumstances, I'm doing okay. <laughs> but quite frankly, this box is scaring the hell out of me. It's just sitting there saying, yes, this is real. Traditions can be a bitch sometimes. I remember when my dad died, the amount of food that Glacian smells was astronomical. I swear, I'm still dealing with the food coma and it's been 10 years. <laughs> but things are gonna get better. Just laugh when you can and remember the good times and not when something good's gonna come out of this. Yeah, that's right. So, how are you doing? <laughs> Okay, got a little overwhelmed, <laughs> but great. That's good to be seeing everybody uh, under the circumstances. I... Oh, it's okay. No, I get what you mean. I'm glad to see everyone too. It's been, what, 10 weeks since we were all last together? <laughs> <gasps> oh, Karen and Kara are on their way. Oh. And Kara asks if you need anything. They're stopping by the store to get some wine. No, wine is good. <laughs> Really good. <laughs> good. You know, I can't believe it actually happened. I mean, I just can't believe it. It's just, I just, I didn't think it would come to this. I mean, we were so happy and everything felt so good. I mean, everything was good and then he had to go and do this. Why things like this happen is something no one will ever figure out. The world and humans are far more unpredictable than most understand. You can be comfortable, you can be complacent, and then some, some little thing happens. Poof, here we are, sitting in a sunroom, looking at a box of money. Like it's a contract with the devil? <laughs> it just tells me that it happened and it's over, and nothing's going to change. I just feel guilty that I want to take all that money and blow it on something frivolous. Bye. What? Oh, like this gorgeous Haldron dress? Oh, it would look so good on me. <laughs> Ugh. Harry's been dead only a few weeks, and I'm only thinking of myself. God's sake, stop it. It's just grief and reality combining at the same time. It's okay to mourn and feel guilty and excited all at the same time. It's okay to be selfish right now. You don't have any kids, you got a great job, and you got a little extra cash and no husband to blow it all on Maggie Beans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> this still be at home this is probably inappropriate but question how come the service was a, a fusion of chinese and american elements oh well while harry wasn't chinese he felt like china was his spiritual home i mean even though he only worked there a couple of years so he wanted a mostly chinese service he put in you know the viewing and other stuff for his parents of course, my mom had to chirp in and say the service was about as Chinese as an egg roll. <laughs> Much like her daughter. As if I wasn't already feeling awful enough. I sometimes wonder if Jewish and Chinese mothers 
go to a secret summit where they write a book on guilt. <laughs> I mean, the tactics they use are so damn similar. <laughs> That's why museum is so chill. You get plenty of chance to make it all up. So if you don't live right, better be ready to become a pig or something. <laughs> or a husband. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Let's hey. get <laughs> So, what's the discussion about? Oh, just my musings on how Jewish and Chinese guilt are so similar. <laughs> I can't speak to that, but I can tell you Catholic guilt. It's no barrel of laughs. I mean, at least with Chinese and Jewish guilt, I feel like it's just mother's nagging. Catholic guilt is going to make you feel better about any decision you make. Good or bad. Yeah. Praise God, I'm a Baptist. Uh, I'm so glad shot. Ah, I'm looking forward to this, huh? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. All right, ladies, this is just the start. And once. Okay. <sighs> to Harry, what we had was so good, and it kills me that it had to end. Here, here. Here, here. Mm -hmm. That's good. Ah. Mm. Oh. Okay, Lady. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah. I, I didn't realize it was that good. Yeah, I checked it out. So. And then I some bed. Ladies, I need your help. He was having a hard time with the donation box. Uh, I'm not surprised. He looked inside it yet? No. I just haven't had the courage. And I've had so many other things to deal with. Like? Well, the stress of the insurance and family and bills. Oh, funeral arrangements? Uh oh, I mean, you were all a great help, but I thought that once he was cremated, it would all be over. I still have things to worry about. I hate to ask this. Is the car he bought still in the garage where he died? Yes, that is one more thing I have to deal with. I can't wait to get rid of it. I blame it for everything that happened. I mean, that's understandable. I mean, if it wasn't for the car, he'd still be alive. I can't believe he bought that stupid thing. I mean, it was just so stupid. He doesn't know the first thing about restoring cars, and then he pays way more for that rusted piece of shit than it was worth. And then he tells me, oh, it's an investment. Stocks are an investment. A rusted piece of shit is a rusted piece of shit. <laughs> God damn it for buying it! God damn it. I never thought this would happen. It's okay. You don't have to keep it bottled up with us. I know. Part of it's just the way I was raised. We were told to just keep it all inside and never show anything. Yeah. Same here. We were brought up to never show any weakness, be tough as nails. Oh, that bullshit. I was fortunate that in my family, we were expected to be emotional and loud. Everyone comes over, we sail, we talk, like we are doing now. The grief part was that managed for was to let it all out. Well, I tell y'all, there's nothing quite like a normal stand on. <laughs> Once the music started, the happy atmosphere was really up for me at ease. Mm. Oh my god, that was so much fun! <laughs> yeah, it really was a blast. I mean, Harry had such a good time. <laughs> Wouldn't that fall under irony? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> you know, I felt so disrespected when he came home with that piece of shit. I mean, we were dying. The house was underwater, our car needed $3,000 in repairs, and he took all of our equity to buy this rusted barracuda in this get-rich-quick scheme. <sighs> I swear, I'm so mad. I just couldn't believe he did that. Ugh, he's such a jerk. And every time I look at that box, it reminds me about how mad I am at him. And how guilty I feel about all the money inside. If I can buy that hot dress. <laughs> what does that say that I'm only thinking of myself? I would say that it makes you human.
Pardon my practicality, but his death solves all of your problems. The house is paid off, and the insurance money, but you buy a new car, pay off all of your bills, and have enough left over for a tiny nest egg. I say sell the Cuda for what he paid for it, and then take some of that money and use it to buy the dress. I like that plan. Hmm. Every one of us feels loss when someone close to us dies. We feel guilty. And it's selfish to move on without them. But we do move on. I beg to differ. I'm happy Jason was dead. He was a dick. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, dick. Yeah. I was happy when that sexist white beaten jerk was dead. Mm. Yeah, but Harry wasn't like that. He was just very rooted in reality. I think that's the truth. I'm sorry, hon. I don't mean to speak ill of the dead, but it's true. Harry just didn't understand the situation, and that was a direct reason for his death. I can't argue with that. That really was the last straw. Can I take a break from talking about my guilt and this damn boss? <laughs> I could use some wine. Oh, yeah. 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 at this point. Oh, and it's like I know. I see the patients. The patients are right. Yeah. But I can't do that. So that is 40 consultants, 10 support staff. All of them are working 60 hours a week and I got more clients in the wings. The business is pulling in 10 million. And even with salary and expenses, we're still looking at a profit of a million dollars. <laughs> but that's still not enough to expand. So I either need to stay the course or I need to find some way to edge some capital. But well, what about your husband? Isn't he making like a gajillion dollars on that app? And he's a pushover. <laughs> Just put on your patent leather underwear, let him lick your boots, and he'll thank you for taking his money. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but and then even with his money, it's still not enough money. Like, the app is still selling, but it's not selling as much as it was. And I need eight million to expand and another two million for improvements. I just don't see any other way forward. Damn, Yana, you've come so far since Jay the Dick died. And now instead of hitting a glass ceiling, you're hitting a financial wall. I have to do something after that bastard was dead. But the best thing, other than not being a punching bag anymore, is all of that money. <laughs> Pig. I was so glad when he died. Linda might be glad. At least he's not a condescending asshole. Mm -hmm. So, how much is Linda worth if something should happen? A fair bit, I would say. The insurance is about 10 times his annual, and the market value of the house is 25 million. And all of the residuals from every app sold come to me. Now that's two to three million, but it's not constant. So you could clear close to 18 million. 38 mil if you sold the house. Oh yeah, that could definitely expand with 38 mil. <laughs> I'll drink to that. The <laughs> body farm. Yeah, it's really good. How you doing, honey? This car I keep you entertained. <laughs> Oh, what are you three talking about? <laughs> None of this business. What else? Oh, stop. <laughs> yeah, Kim and I were just talking about that on the way here. It sucks. Oh, you know, I'll help in any way I can. Same here. You know you can count on us. <laughs> well, thank you, ladies. But it's not about me. It's about you moving forward. It's okay, Anna. You know, these past few weeks have been pretty rough. Waiting for the release of the body, the insurance payout, and the cremation arrangements. It felt like at any second, everything was just going to fall apart. I think that's why this box really scares me. I'm terrified that if I open it up and take out the money, everything's just going to come crashing down. I know, I'm being silly. It's over. The money's been paid. It's just a pile of ashes in the living room. Nothing can come crashing down now. Time to stop worrying. Just do it.
Except maybe Yana. <laughs> but let's face it, you and Harry were having problems well before the car thing. Yeah, but that was just stupid stuff. Well, what's Mostly. stupid to some may be dire to others. You've been dealing with him wasting money on get-rich-quick schemes for years. With the car, Harry pushed you into a corner. I know you never wanted to harm Harry. You've been fighting against it for years, but the time had come, you had to push back. And boy, did you. He pushed real hard. I think Bew knows that. And she knows it, but she has to accept it. Harry fucked up. He fucked up big, and he paid the price for it. Don't feel guilty that your life is so much better now. Just own it. Karen knows what she's talking about. In fact, we all do. Mm -hmm. We all got pushed to where we had to push back. Jason's abuse, Robert's neglect, Lamont's womanizing, Cena's gambling. We did what we needed to do. You saw how miserable we all were. You remember when Cena died? How I came to life? I lost 50 pounds, found the career I love, and I'm about to snack wife number two. <laughs> You've been there for us right from the start. And that's why we're all here for you now. I know, I know. And I get it. And I'm okay with the way things turn out. I'm just struggling that it had to come to this. I mean, I just don't know how Harry could keep living, hoping for a lucky break. No matter how much I tried, he refused to change. Oh, we have all been guilty of the weak and change <laughs> syndrome. Mm -hmm. It never works. And if we're lucky, at least he comes correct. The truth is, killing him is the only option. I mean, it was your plan that got rid of Robert. And to this day, I am amazed at how well that worked. <laughs> <laughs> I find it funny that Harry accidentally provided the cause for his own death. <laughs> well, it was it was easy. Just seal the garage with plastic while he was working with primer on his car. <laughs> it was inspired car. <laughs> Thanks to all those crime shows, it's like a how-to manual. Don't even have to hide the evidence. He just didn't ventilate properly. Mm -hmm. You. The guilt you feel will be with you for a while, and that's okay. Regardless of the fact that Robert, Jason, Lamont, Cena, and Harry all got what they deserved, they were still important to each of us. In time, you'll remember the good times and accept the fact that we had to take a stand. We should never be ignored, abused, neglected, or treated without respect. Accept that, embrace it, and you'll come through. Thanks, sisters. I am so lucky. We're the lucky ones. You've been with us since the beginning, supporting us, helping us break free. Without you, we never would have survived. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. Completely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cheers. These last few weeks have been a struggle. I'm the mourning widow and not being able to do anything until everything's over. I mean, Harry's parents wouldn't leave me alone. <laughs> They'd be mining me at them. Luckily, my parents didn't like him and he was quiet. <laughs> so, uh, how much you make off with? So, insurance payout was 200 grand along with the mortgage he paid off. <laughs> oh, that's uh, very, very nice. <laughs> 
combine it when you got there and some of the cards I don't stand, you have enough to get that dress and snack husband number two. <laughs> oh, okay. Yes! I don't think I'm ready for that part of the plan yet. I mean, I still have to sell that piece of shit car and we want to deal with Yana's expansion problem. No, we are not talking about my problems today. Oh, it's okay, Yana. I want to help. It's what I need. Are you sure that's not the wine, doctor? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little, but I don't care. Let's solve Yana's problem. Oh, <laughs> she's right. I say let's do it. <laughs> the university trip will buy you that shopping to me. So we're all agreed? How are we going to get rid of Yana's second husband? <laughs> <laughs> No. I think it would look too suspicious so close to Vue's husband's death. Yeah, I'm with Karen on this one. Yeah, and making it look like a suicide just isn't feasible. It was easy to convince the cops that she and Seth was a suicide. Oh, gambling addiction and excessive death drove her to kill herself. Simple, clean. Now somewhere with Yana's husband. He has a hot wife and a job he loves. Aw, you think I'm hot? <laughs> Put on some indie go-go's and I'll make out. <laughs> yup, me too. <laughs> <laughs> ladies, ladies! I think we're getting off topic here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. What about the way Karen's husband died? Straight up repeat of what happened to Lamont, which is strange, suspicious circumstances. Damn! I wanted to be the mugger this time. Don't, don't worry, honey. You'll get your chance someday. <laughs> you know, I think we can really do this. I mean, we got rid of Jay the dick by working together. Oh my god, that was such a long night. Why is it so damn hard to chop up a body? To me, it was dismantling the power saw. It was such a bitch to dismantle it and spread out all the pieces. Oh. Yeah, well at least laying out the drop cloths and wrapping everything up was pretty easy. Yeah. But I was so tired the <laughs> next morning. I swear, I slept for days. Me too. <laughs> what about autoerotic asphyxiation? A little DDS and play getting a little out of hand. <laughs> oh, no, the last thing we need is some Puritan cop with a grudge against women to take one look and say, a kinky wife did it. Uneducated dolt. I think that's stretching it a bit. What does Lennon like to do besides licking boots and, uh, you know, computer stuff? <laughs> that's about it. I mean, he doesn't like to go out, doesn't like vacations. Half the time he doesn't even go into work. He just stays down in the computer lab. Doesn't he ever fool around? You know, maybe a fling gone wrong? If only. Honestly, I don't think he's even into sex if the work isn't going good. He just fucks and then he fucks off back to the lab. Ooh, what about electrocution? He just falls asleep and then boom, one of his computers blows up. But he's so paranoid about losing stuff that the entire room is electroproof. What about poison? No bus, no bus. Old hat. Jeez, Anna, you so picky. <sighs> Girls, I'm sorry. I know the solution's there. I just don't know where. Hey! Huh? A bogle! The only place to get him is at that house. <laughs> yes. My time to shine. <laughs> you really want to play criminal, don't you? <laughs> Regardless of that, it's the perfect plan. Unless you guys don't have any bubbles in the area. Not a lot. But every once in a while, a house does get broken into. I just, I don't think people are home at the time the house is getting robbed. So on 
guessing you guys have a good security system as well. Best money can buy. So if the system's deactivated, all eyes are going to turn to me. <laughs> what about combining a lover's tryst with a cop? It's not trysting at all. Not even with me. <laughs> the cops don't know that. Wait a minute. I think I see where you're going with this. <laughs> so... You said you learned a lot about computers and shit, right? Mm -hmm. Between Linden and the business, I've learned a lot. Mm -hmm. So, could you create a profile on one of those adult websites and make sure there's a back and forth? Easy. You don't even have to be an expert to do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So you make it look like he's in the gay dudes. Russian hookers there. <laughs> Gold diggers. <laughs> you create two profiles, one for him, one for whoever. You do the back and forth. Say, wife goes out all the time, let's have sex, blah, blah, blah. Had a wonderful weekend, let's do it again. Hmm. And then you make it look like it was all a plot to get his money. He turns off the alarms to let his tryst in. They kill him and rip him off. Wait, do you still have that hundred grand in your safe at home? Is there a list of serial numbers? Yeah, cash is queen, and the list is in my safety deposit box. <laughs> that list has to disappear, and so does the money. Yeah, but I can't eat a hundred thousand dollars. Hey, I'll take that cash and combine it with mine, and then invest in your business. The universe again. Huh? Can't argue with the timing. And now you have a reason for the alarms to be off. Claire can kill him, take the money. And this mysterious profile can disappear, making it look like he was the victim of a con artist or something. I think this just might work. He designs apps, so that would explain why he's on a dating app. He's virtually a recluse with a well-known and hard-working wife who spends late nights at the office. I, well, I, I definitely think this would work. Okay, okay, so, so if the cops question you, you can say, well, he has been distant lately and not wanting to have sex, which is true, and he's into kink. So a cop who didn't understand that world might think that it was some weird sex act gone wrong. <laughs> Actually, that would tie into my BDSM death. <laughs> not you doing it, obviously, but this mysterious fake profile. And I can take the money and not use it until you're ready for your expansion plan after your morning period. Well, Yana, what do you think? So, I think it could work. <laughs> I mean, it's got a lot of tricky moving parts, but just under the surface, I think it's sound. Then the next time we meet, we'll map things out. See if we can cover the logistics. Okay, let's do this. <laughs> One last toast. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? You doing okay? Oh god, yes. <laughs> Tonight is just what I needed. Thanks for letting me talk it out. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what we do. You, you call me if you need me to bring some wine and some trashy TV. You know, girls night. You know I can't resist trashy TV. Uh, oh my god. Thanks for having us. Hey, Bew, thank you for letting me take some of your time tonight. Oh, I want to help. As I said, this is something I need. I can't wait to see what happens next. You me there. <laughs> Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye. Hey, Bew. Let me know if you need me to help get rid of the collar. Hey, Nelson. Thanks. I could use the help. <laughs> You take care of mine. Claire. Yes, pal. Yes. Like, <sighs> face to there and see you later, you. Anytime. Bye. <laughs> Bye, Cara. Bye, Karen. <laughs> Bye. Thanks again for a wonderful evening. Looking forward to next week for Book Club. The <laughs> same here. <laughs> you know, we got a lot done tonight. <laughs> we did. Oh. Yeah. <laughs>